Thank you for staying with us. <clears throat> The Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress have said that uh, they are declaring an indefinite strike starting Monday the 3rd of June after failing to agree a new minimum wage with the government. They had said on May the 1st that they would down tools if a new minimum wage was not agreed by the end of the month. So the unions in a statement said... Quote, government refused to move forward. Not even a Kobo was added to the 60,000 Naira that they proposed on Tuesday. So, we rightly rejected. End of quote. <laughs> so, no minimum wage has been agreed. Government uh, stood at 60,000 Naira. That is 100% of the former minimum wage. And Labour was saying, no can do. Most, pri uh, most um, uh, services and goods have gone up by 300, 400%. So how can an increase of 100% to the workers deal with that level of increase? We're going to have this conversation with the Director General and CEO, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadiri. Good morning, Mr. Ajayi Kadiri. A good morning, and thank you for having me on your show. So, um, Labour is calling out a strike yet again. What are your thoughts about this strike? At this time, when things are very difficult, they're very difficult, I know, and labor is asking for more money for workers. I mean, what government is offering is only the equivalent of $40. Your thoughts? Okay, thank you again for having me. I, I think that to start with, this is a very difficult time for anyone to negotiate minimum wage. So from the perspective of government and the perspective of labor, and of course the organized uh, private sector, we operate in an environment where there is uh, a general acceptance of the fact that the macroeconomics are not right. Uh, even the global economy is experiencing a lot of shakeup, and the domestic economy itself is grappling with the aftermath of government's uh, necessary reforms. So uh, naturally, and even from the beginning of the negotiation of the minimum wage, it's evident to the tripartite, that is the government, the labor, and the organized private sector, that we are going to operate in a rather difficult terrain. Mm. So when uh, we finished the meeting uh, on the national uh, minimum wage, which was generally called to have uh, some agreement, some closure on the rates to be agreed, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, labor uh, chose the part of uh, declaring a strike and rejecting the offer of both the government and the organized uh, private sector. I believe that uh, for us in the private sector, this is a very, very difficult time. And already we are grappling with the inadequacy in the macroeconomic environment, rising costs, uh, infrastructure, insecurity, and so on and so forth. But to now compound it with an industrial action is actually debilitating to the productive sector, particularly the manufacturing sector. Mm. So what we are seeing is a situation where if we are not able to produce, even with all the challenges that we have, it's going to have a ripple effect, not only on uh, our production process, mm. but on labor itself. I mean, mm. because if we down tools, and we are unable to produce, it is doubtful if we'll be able to pay even the offer that the private sector has made and the government itself. Okay. But I think that what needed to be done uh, is, is for us to have a conversation that 
uh, allows us to continue with the process until we are able to reach some form of agreement. But as to what the effect will be on the private sector, of course, it's going to disrupt the process and leave us uh, in a situation where it will be worse than where we started from. Mr. Jai Kadri, how much is organized private sector offering? Uh, incidentally, the organized private sector and government have offered 60000 okay. as the minimum wage. Okay. And I think it is very important for us to understand that what we are talking about is the minimum wage. That is what some people have called the walk-in wage. Yeah. That means it is the, uh, the amount you will pay the least worker in the country. As somebody who is expected to be a fresher, somebody who is expected to be earning his first wage in paid employment, for instance, and somebody who is aspiring to grow in the ladder. And it is minimum wage we are, we, we are negotiating, not actually a living wage. Well, mm -hmm. interesting, uh, Mr. Kadir uh, I mean, uh, sorry, Mr. Ajay Kadir. Where, where, before that, I'd like you to do us one favor. Take us to the room. What, what's the mood in the room when these conversations are going on? Nigerians would be wondering, look, you guys just sit around the table, you decide this. We don't even know what is happening. Unfortunately, of course, we can't have a, what do we call it now, live telecast of the negotiations. But give us an idea of what the mood in the room is like. It's been a long time since the federal government and the organized private sector were on the same side. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that what has happened now is that uh, we have reached the critical stage where we all have to come together. And it's a very interesting development, and I get the, the, the direction you are coming from. <laughs> we see, what has happened is that all of us in the tripartite, the government, the labor, and the private sector, we all knew that we were operating in a very difficult environment. The government itself realized that it has limited capacity to pay. The private sector is constrained by macroeconomic and infrastructure security challenges. So we are also constrained to pay. And labor is under intense pressure from its constituency to ask for higher wages because inflation has hit the roof mm -hmm. and the operating environment is tough. The average income compared to what it can buy uh, is, is shrinking. So we were all uptight about the operation. And throughout the negotiation process, we made it known that this is not the best of times to negotiate minimum wage. Mm -hmm. This is not the best. This is the time for us to agree to grow the economy, kill behind the government, and grow economy and grow the economy in such a way that we will bake a bigger cake and then we'll be able to share. I mean, we must not lose sight of the fact that uh, before this administration came in, our economy suffered. And we are now uh, experiencing the hardness of uh, insensitivity of government to what needed to be done at the appropriate time. So we have a situation where we have to negotiate the minimum wage. Unfortunately for us, we didn't have an understanding before we commenced the assignment. And I must say this, we didn't have an understanding that we are leaders. As elites, we needed to have a correct understanding of where the country is at at this time. Whether it is possible for us to retain the uh, workforce that we have and then be able to pay the kind of uh, minimum wage that is being demanded by labor. I mean, for government, I mean, I'm aware that they have constraints in terms of how the economy is moving, what monies are available, and all that is needed to be done to improve infrastructure and so on and so forth. At the level of the private sector, I must tell you, we have offered a 100% increase from the last minimum wage. There is no company in Nigeria, no manufacturing industry in Nigeria that has achieved a 100% increase in terms of its profitability, either before or after tax. 
-hmm. either in terms of turnover as well. So yeah, uh, we, 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 we have challenges. And of course, you must also speak of the labor that they also have challenges. I mean, all of us go to the same market and we understand what it is. So it's, it's for us to remain on the table where we are able to uh, agree on what needed to be done and even space out the expectations that uh, labor has. Because we are all employers and this is one country that we have. We cannot afford to cripple the economy when all we needed to do was continue to build it. I think uh, uh, President Tinubu was very clear uh, when he emerged as president that these are not going to be easy times. And I think we needed to tighten uh, our belt to be able to deliver on an economy that we know has been seriously battered. Of course, government also on its own side has to demonstrate leadership and sensitivity and presence of mind as well as sense of occasion of the period that we are in. And then so government expenditure, government choices of what needed to be done, how much needed to be spent, the cost of governance itself, all of it has to come to the table. Because I think uh, what labor is actually worried about is that they appear to be the, the ones that are on the brunt of it. But we needed to be able to engage, working out on the process and declaring strikes. I do not think that that is what is going to solve this problem now. Because now in the private sector, we are already suffering uh, low capacity utilization, extremely low uh, purchases because our warehouses are full. We have about 217 billion of unplanned inventory that we are not able to sell. And to recently we've had an unconscionable increase in tariff of electricity that is not possible for us to live with and be able to produce and make profit. So there are so many challenges that are coming. And I believe that the tripartite ought to be able to have an engagement that will allow us to maybe space out our, our challenges and reach an amicable settlement as to what we can do and how we can scale up uh, immediately. Mr. Jai Kadri, I, I, I feel for you, and I, by you I mean each of you at that meeting, because each person will bring up points and the points will be valid. The worker, for instance, has to face hikes in housing, housing costs, hike in transportation costs, hike, in fact, feeding in capital letters he has to face, electricity in capital letters, all those have gone up by several percentage points. Then government will put forward its own case as well, which are valid, but the worker, of course, is looking at government, if you tighten your belt a bit, maybe you could uh, offer us a bit more if you reduced all the loopholes where stealing is going on, where we hear that XYZ minister or this has gone away with several billions, then maybe you will be able to find more money to pay us. And OPS also has its own points. So I feel for all three of you at this meeting, but the, the, the laborer is thinking about how am I going to pay all these bills? I used to pay 400 naira to get to work and get back home. Now I'm paying 2,000. Where should I get the money from? If this minimum wage stays as low as you all want it to be at 60,000 naira, you are going to face losses. I'm sure you have thought about all that because your goods are going to be carted away and things are going to be happening in your manufacturing places. Mr. Jai Kadiri? Yes it's, yes, it's an extremely difficult situation that we have. And like I said before, this is not the best time to negotiate minimum wage at all. It is not. And I can assure you that all the problems that the labor has listed and all those things you have explained, they more or less appear the same way with us in the organized private sector. The exchange rate has completely gone out of the proportion that we felt it should. We also have the devaluation of the Naira. 
we have the removal of first subsidy. We have a situation where the price of electricity has gone up. Hmm. Apart from the price of electricity, we all know that there are several reforms that needed to be made. And I think the Mr. President was very clear as to what we needed to do. He didn't leave anybody in doubt that times are going to be hard. Yeah. So what was needed, like you rightly said, was for government to demonstrate that we are all in need together. Thank you. And so you will expect that there will be an immediate wind down on cost of governance. Thank you. Both in the executive arm of government and in the legislative arm of government. Probably this will have sent the right signals to labor. But I must say that we should never lose sight of the fact that what we are negotiating is the minimum wage. Of course, there will be consequential adjustment for all other cadres. Mm. But we needed to be able to continue to have a conversation. What I'm particularly worried about and what the private sector is worried about is the absence of consultations. You see, because you rightly recognize that these are difficult times, you cannot expect us to reach uh, an agreement very quickly. Uh, the federal government itself is constrained because after fixing the minimum wage, the next important thing is sustainability. There are some states that have only started to pay what we agreed five years ago. Hmm. We needed to deal with the issue of compliance. And you know, immediately, Mr. President signs, it becomes law. Now, for all those who have failed to comply in the last five years, there has been no consequence. I mean, so what is the uh, certainty we have? That if we go ahead to fix a much higher rate, we'll be able to get compliance particularly from the state. Well, Mr. Ajayi Kadri, the answer to and that... I believe that... Ju just a second, if you can hear me. Conversations. Yeah, my apologies. Uh, there yes. are those who would say, well, of course, it's a question we've put out to some uh, authorities, such as yourself before, and I think legislators. One of the issues they raised is that, look, we can't even bring up the idea that some state governors can't pay the minimum wage because they now get more money than they ever did before now, especially with the fuel subsidy removal. We also understand that the subsidy at the time was costing the Federal Republic of Nigeria about $10 billion mm -hmm. every year. But now that has been saved quite significantly, and which means that you know, uh, states now have money from, a little more money from FAC. But then there is also the argument that some people, workers, labor, whoever, will bring up that look, even though you say that uh, federal government is going to feel it, the uh, organized private sector is going to feel it, they say that you guys are living large. CEOs of, of government organizations, of private organizations, they are living large, right around in their SUVs, you know, you know big uh, salaries and um, very, very expensive and affluent benefits to their pay. Uh, some look at the convoy of the president, for instance, look at the convoy uh, of the, the president of the Senate, uh, mm -hmm. convoy of the governors, thank you, Alero, and they say, look, you guys are living large, so we want to live a tiny little bit large as well. Uh, so what do, you say, what do you say to them in response? How can you convince labor that there isn't money when all of you are driving in, you know, around in big SUVs? Well, honestly, that is a, that is a big a concern, even to us in the private sector. We have always indicated that, look, we operate in a tough environment. The macroeconomics not right. Government revenue is shrinking. And government uh, avenues to even increase its revenue it's always also dwindling. So there has to be a demonstration on the part of government that, they are in, that we are in it together. I think Labour has raised that severally. And they have actually been assured that it's going to be part of the report that the National Minimum Wage uh, Committee was going to pass on to Mr. President, so that Mr. President is able to encourage, uh, to able to encourage other tiers of government and uh, other arms of government to be able to uh, respect the situation that we have found ourselves in. Don't forget that we are only a federal government uh, co committee and that there is a separation of powers. 
and there are also different tiers of government where each uh, tier has has some relative autonomy but as as a committee of the federal government we had indicated in our various subcommittees that we needed to call on government to ensure that the environment uh, in which we operate is reflected on the cost of governance and that if you are asking us to tighten your belt you should tighten your own belt as well i mean so that we all know that when we do get out of this we will all loosen our belts at the same time uh, a laborer is, de is uh, deserving of his wage there's no doubt about that and at the committee i mean if labor if labor will agree i mean to say what actually happened every time that we met we always knew the situation that we were in. We knew that these are difficult times. We know that we have not gotten our macroeconomics right. We know that there's insecurity, there's infrastructure deficiency. We know that costs are rising. The inflation is rising and that businesses are suffering. Mm -hmm. So part of the recommendations we are going to make to the president is to ensure that we operate in a lower cost environment. Because for us in the manufacturing sector, for instance, we are competing with products that come from low cost environments. And if we continue to escalate our costs, even in our own market, they will beat us. Not to talk of the need for us to be able to export our products. Every day okay. costs are rising. And okay. even uh, electricity that you, you yourself mentioned, it constitutes about 28 to 40 percent of our cost structure. So when you move it up by more than 250 percent, what are you saying? Mm. You're asking everyone that is manufacturing to go home. And we can't afford that. You mm. can imagine if as labor <coughs> declared that they are going on strike. The manufacturing sector also goes on strike, for instance. Okay. We'll bring the country, that, but that cannot be in the interest of anybody. Okay. It's not in the interest of labor, it's not in the interest of organized private sector, and it's certainly not in the interest of government. Okay. Because President okay. Tinubu had promised that he was going to improve production. And that is what we should hold him up to and give the necessary support that is needed. Okay. Has there been any overture from any side to make sure that this action doesn't start on Monday? It doesn't go, that, that Labour does not go ahead with it? Yeah, so we are trying to uh, reach out in our various ways, uh, mostly informal, because I'm not aware that there's going to be any meeting of the National Minimum Wage uh, uh, committee uh, but I, I must say that there is need for us between today and tomorrow for us to avert this strike i can assure you that the economy cannot afford any strike at this time uh, what, what we need to be able to put our acts together we need to be able to engage as leaders and as elites in nigeria so that we do not disappoint the teeming population of nigerians that are looking for us to demonstrate leadership at this tough time these are tough times for everybody, for government, for labor, and for the private sector. What we need to do is to continuously engage and see how we can narrow the differences that we have. We cannot afford a national strike at this time. And I think the message should be very clear. And this administration has only spent one year. We needed to be able to understand what is going to happen in the next three years so that we are all able to queue behind government and have a national agenda that will promote productivity and ensure that the teeming Nigerians that are looking forward to good governance are able to experience the dividends of democracy, as they say. So I think we need to return to the table and between now and Monday to be able to strike an agreement that avers the right and assures labor that we are all on the same page. I think government needs to do more and the, uh, in, in conjunction with the other legs of the tripartite to achieve that before Monday. The press conferences that Labour has had after those meetings generally give the impression that government does not care. I don't know if we, some of us are reading uh, the wrong meanings into what, <laughs> what things are being said and what things are not being said. Is that the, do you get that feeling? Well, I don't think that uh, government does not care. I believe that government is constrained. I mean, that's my honest opinion. Uh, government is constrained to pay higher. And I think that is the same thing also with us because, I mean, what we are talking about is the minimum wage. And in the membership of man, for instance, we have more than 75% of us that are in the small scale segment. 
So we need to be able to understand what they can pay. Because when this minimum wage is signed into law, what it means is that it becomes uh, a disobedience of the Binding. law where you pay lower. So we should get the sense we are talking about. That means that any, any manufacturer, for instance, that has more than maybe 60 or 70 workers must pay a minimum of 60,000. How profitable are you to be able to deliver? Capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector is less than 50%. Our profitability has dwindled. Everybody has his warehouse full, and Nigerians are not able to buy. So if you raise the minimum wage, where are you going to pay? I mean, we have cases of industries leaving Nigeria. Why are they leaving? It's because of the tough environment. So if you raise the minimum wage beyond what we are able to pay, you are simply asking for downsizing and inability to pay. Mm. So I think that for government, I don't see any feeling of, uh, that, that, that they do not care. It's just because it's just that government must demonstrate that they are also in this for us and to ensure that we remain on the negotiation table so okay. that we'll be able to have an agreement that works for everybody. Because those in labor are also Nigerians. Government mm -hmm. itself is Nigeria. Our president is a Nigerian. And those of us that operate in the private sector, we are Nigerians. We all go to the same market. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we should be able to have a, 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 we should be able to be patriotic enough, patriotic enough to agree on something that will be agreeable to, to Nigeria. We must not be unmindful of the fact that the labor is representing a huge uh, number of workers. But at the same time, there are so many Nigerians that are not government workers. Yes. And I believe that when we negotiate this minimum wage, it's going to have a national application. So we should be mindful of the capacity of those that are even outside of government and outside the poor view of the organized private sector to comply with the law. Okay. So I think that's the kind of conversation mm. we should have so okay. that we'll be able to reach an amicable agreement. It is not good for any arm of the tripartite to mm. assume that the other one does not care. Otherwise, why are we in the same boat? And why did Mr. President set us up? Okay. I mean, we're a group of people that are supposed to lead the country at this difficult time. And we need to exercise restraint we need to exercise understanding, and we need to be conscious of the environment in which we operate. I, I can recall, I don't know whether it's right to say it, but the coordinating minister for the economy has laid the figures on the table about how we are performing and how we are delivering. So it is for us to look at it and negotiate effectively so that we provide leadership. Nigeria is desirous. Nigerians are desirous okay. of an environment where all the players behind an administration to deliver national development. Hmm. That is what we need. And CEO. I don't think staying away hmm. and throwing tantrums and the rest is going to deliver that. CEO Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kaderi, please do all you can to avert the strike of Monday because in our circumstances now, the last thing we need is and industrial action. The hunger is enough as it is, and it will get worse should there be any strike action. Thank you very much for coming on Sunrise this morning. Sunrise will return in just a moment with... Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Thank you.